Alright, so moving on with the Crash games, we have a kart racing game that is essentially a sequel to the PS1 Crash Racing game. In fact, I'll talk a little bit about that game as well since it holds some relevance here. So you kinda get a 2 for 1 in this review. I don't really know why Universal chose a kart racing game to be next, but they did get new developers this time around. Those being Vicarious Visions, who had developed a few GBA Crash games. Well, why don't we take a look at the game itself and see just how well they did and if Crash Nitro Kart is worth playing. Starting things off, we have the story, and yes, this game does in fact have a story. It all begins with Crash and his friends just relaxing, and Cortex and his minions plotting before all of them suddenly get abducted. Coming to, they find that they have been abducted by these green-looking aliens. Their leader, Emperor Velo, the 27th, demands that the Earthlings he had captured participate in a racing tournament to entertain his citizens. If they win, they will leave Earth alone. If they lose, however, then Earth will be destroyed. Destroyed. And really, that's about it. Sure, there are a few moments where you get to see other racers from other participating planets that are a little entertaining as you do get a good idea of each racer's personality. But aside from a quick and decent ending, that's really it. Honestly, I don't mind this as it's a racing game, so I don't really think it needs a story to begin with. With the story that we got, however, eh, it's fine, and it sets up why everyone is racing rather well. Though I will imagine it's also a rather lazy story at the same time. Here's where we're going to talk a little bit about Crash Team Racing, because it pretty much has the same story but with a different villain. My verdict on that game's story is the same for Crash Nitro Karts. It's fine and works rather well, though I can see someone playing Crash Nitro Kart after playing Crash Team Racing and feeling that things are a bit repetitive in the story. Is it a huge problem? No, not really. I just can't help but to notice the immense immense similarities between the two stories. Now, why don't we get into that gameplay? Okay, so before we get way too far into this, let me just say why I want to talk about Crash Team Racing a little bit as well in this review. Well, it's because they both are very similar in gameplay and gaming options, so it holds relevance here to me. But why don't we just get my opinions out of the way about Crash Team Racing, since it's not the main event here. Let me quickly say that CTR is one of my favorite car racing games for the PlayStation. It's colorful, it has fun tracks, decent control, and it's overall a really fun game that I would recommend to anyone who enjoys kart racing games. So what about Crash Nitro Kart? Well, there are two main modes to the game, those being Adventure and Free Race options that are both single player and multiplayer. Let's begin with Adventure mode, where you can choose to play as Crash's side or Cortex's side. In this mode, you will play through the game's story, in which you will be dropped into small hub worlds. From these hub worlds, you can drive to portals that represent different tracks that you will have to race in. After winning each race, you then get to take on the boss racer, who after you beat, you will then be able to go on to the next hub world. I actually kind of like this setup. To me, the small hub worlds are fun to drive around in, and I quite like the boss fight races. In these races, you're only going against the boss, as they throw a bunch of hazards your way that you need to dodge and to get ahead of. To me, they're just plain fun. And after you've gotten first place in a race, you can go back to that portal and replay the races in different kinds of challenges, like collecting the CNK tokens. Personally, I avoided these, as I'm not a huge fan of going out of my way for a token while still trying to get first place. But hey, if you're looking for something to challenge your skills, then they are at least there. Unfortunately, you need to do these challenges in order to unlock gem cups, and it's in these gem cups where you can unlock new characters. Well, you can also unlock a couple of characters by drifting with a 50 drift combo, but uh, that's also kind of annoying. Both of these methods suck. To me, when it comes to racing games, you should make things unlockable in a more simplified manner, like collecting coins in Mario Kart. So no, I haven't unlocked these characters, because that much effort to me really isn't worth it. CRT to me is much better in this area, well yes, you do have to go through a bunch of hoops to unlock characters, there's also a cheat code you can use to unlock them all. You can't do that in CNK. While a cheat code really isn't the better option, at least I can still play as different characters in a more simplified manner. I still think that unlocking characters 
or carts needs to be done in a much better method. Okay, let's talk about the other racing modes you can do in the single player or multiplayer. First, of course, you can race on any of the tracks you want in any order you want. There are also cups you can race in, but these aren't the cups that will unlock new characters. Next, we have time trials, where you can try to finish a track in as fast of a time as you can. If you do manage to get a good enough time on these tracks, you can unlock a new character. Then, finally, we have battle mode, where you will drive around in these arenas picking up items to use against everyone else and try to get the most points. Of these options, I usually play free racing and battle mode the most, as I enjoy both of these modes. Since racing is the focus of the game, I guess we should finally talk about it. For the most part, it's pretty standard for racing games, as you drive around on these rather well-designed tracks trying to get first place. There are two different kind of crates you can drive into on the tracks. Crates that will give you wampa fruit, and crates that will give you items to use, like rockets and bubbles. By collecting 10 wampa fruit, Route, you get a powered up version of items you get from the item crates. Honestly, I think that's a cool mechanic. It makes it worthwhile going for those Wampa Fruit, which are sometimes placed in hard to reach locations unless you're skilled enough to get them, which rewards you with better items. Another, and unfortunately small part of the races, is in certain tracks you can find gravity modes. Yes, much like in Mario Kart 8, there are moments where you be driving up walls, and it's honestly really great. For example, there is a track where you will drive up and around a clock, and another where you can drive along the wall to avoid a train. These moments are honestly really great and help make these tracks stand out more. I just wish more tracks had them. What I also like about these gravity sections is that they also help change the layout of tracks, making them so much more interesting and complex in ways that haven't been done before in car racing games. At least Mario Kart 8 did do more with the idea, because it's honestly one of the best ideas to come out of this game. Lastly, let's talk about drifting. Yes, drifting is in other racing games, but the way it's used here is quite unique. While drifting, you can use a speed boost, which will combo up your drifts. By simply drifting, you can get three speed boosts in a row, but combos can be built by boosting off of ramps, running into boost tracks, and sometimes running into gravity sections. So as long as you know a track well enough, you can really rack up those boosts, giving the race quite the momentum. It also doesn't hurt that drifting in of itself really feels good and is very responsive. I would have to say that the drifting in this game is actually much better than the drifting in Crash Team Racing. If there is one issue I have with the multiplayer, it's that if you have more than two players playing, then you will start to lose more computer racers. So if you're playing with four other friends, you will only be competing against each other, as there will be no computer players around. I don't know why this is, maybe it was some type of limitation within the game itself, but it kinda does bug me. The game looks pretty alright. Character models aren't amazing, but they work well enough. Most of the tracks I would say look pretty good and have something that makes them stand out visually. There is a track with a large clock section, one that has an underwater pipe, a nice jungle temple location, and an interesting mix of snow and machinery and another. However, I find that most of the tracks have some slightly dull and muted colors to them, which is a shame since I really like how vibrant and lively the colors are in CTR. There are some small details added to the game that I do like in terms of its visuals, like how the Aku Aku mask works as an invincibility item for hero characters, while for villainous characters like Cortex, it's Uka Uka instead. A simple but nice little touch. I will say that I really like the new boss racers and how they look, as they each have something unique about them that makes them stand out rather well. Though the game does suffer from some rather long loading screens, which can make things feel very slow when you're just racing for fun. One of the big things about the game during the development were the cutscenes, which honestly did turn out pretty good. They are easy to watch and have some good animations to them. Then we have the music, which is much like that of Crash Wrath of Cortex. It's not at all bad music and definitely feels like Crash music. I will say that there are some better themes here, and a few tracks actually do stand out, but the soundtrack really isn't anything amazing. Amazing. So, would I recommend Crash Nitro Kart? Yeah, 
I would if you really like car racing games and are a fan of Crash, then it's a fun game to play. Sure, I have some issues with the colors in the game, its long loading times, and the poor way of unlocking characters. But as for the racing itself, it's great. Racetracks are well laid out. There's some nice mechanics here, like the Wampa Fruit, the gravity modes, and the drifting, which feels really smooth in this game. I wouldn't say I like it more than Crash Team Racing, in fact, I recommend that game over this one, but I still think Crash Nitro Kart is a good racing game for the PlayStation 2. It won't blow your mind, but you can certainly have some fun with this game for a few hours with some friends. Well, it looks like the next Crash game is a platforming one. So, let's see if things get any better for the Bandicoot then. Thank <laughs> you.